Well, again, hello everybody, and I've got another fantastic guest for my powerful women. And this powerful woman is Jules Chabot, and she's, as it says on the bottom of her screen, a wildlife artist. Now, I've seen her stuff, and I think it's gorgeous. And if you want to see it, um, she's mostly put it on Instagram. Am I right, Jules? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I use Instagram as my my main um, social media. Um, and of course, I've got my website as well. So you can see it on there too. And you'll have all those links in, in the show notes. But I was there going, well, you know, I've, I've got her bio and all this kind of thing. And that isn't what I want to say when I'm introducing her. And <laughs> so I'm going to try and do something I haven't done before because I want to share screen with you all as well as us and let's see if this actually shows you a little bit of who she is mm -hmm. I mean I was first presented you know I get on a website and I'm presented with this amazing face <laughs> and um that to me I mean not that I'm not saying Jules, Jules is a hair although <laughs> you don't want to be um but <laughs> it's just like somebody who has seen a hair who is actually seeing you and this is what really does it for me. It's those eyes. And mm -hmm. hair is actually seeing you. And I see, I feel that. Is that how it is for you when you're painting, Jules? Yeah, absolutely. And it's it's lovely to hear you say that, Ellen, because that's exactly how I work as an artist. And I'm relatively new as a as a wildlife artist it's only been sort of the last four years that I've been doing it professionally mm. I've always drawn and painted but um and it's always been wildlife um but um but my my passion and my um I guess I don't know how you'd describe it just my connection with animals has always been sort of a a central part of me and so when I see an animal, um, I was saying this morning on on my Instagram, and no matter what's happening, everything else disappears, and I am totally absorbed and in awe of this beautiful being and wanting to, you know, send them love and connect with them and and feel into who they are and honour them, and um, and that's exactly what I can, what I'm fortunate enough to be able to do when I'm painting and drawing is to, is to hold that connection, you know, even though they're not physically there with me at the time. Yeah. Um, and then I hope, and I, I do get a lot of people saying they can feel similar to yourself, that they can feel that connection that's being emitted from the being in the painting um, coming through, which is, which is wonderful. Cause that's, I guess what my heart's trying to do is, is share that with as many other people as possible and help them remember that animals um, and all sentient beings have got so much to share with us and so much to offer and help us with. Yeah, I'm, that is totally where my heart is too. I mean, I'm I'm totally fixated and obsessed and whatever other sort of syndrome you think you I might have. Um, you know, wildlife <laughs> is my life, and like you, I've always been that connected with them and I feel that connection too but I'm just sort of getting this I'm going to turn this off in a minute because I'm, I'm going to get mesmerized by hair in a minute but I'm really feeling I'm being looked at by this hair who is who are you what are you yeah who are you what are you talking about what do you want to ask me what do you want to tell me what do I want to tell you and I'm getting all of that stuff from hair and I think it's something that is so either hidden either you know if we've got it we hide it under a flower pot somewhere or mm. else we don't realize that we can because people laugh at us I'm yeah. going to stop the share for a minute because I'm sure everybody else is getting mesmerized too. <laughs> <laughs> well there's you know I can't think of much better a uh, much better way of being mesmerized than a beautiful big hair <laughs> oh no, exactly but I do feel that it's something that's missing in our lives we yeah. sometimes connect with other people but we're not awfully good at that half the time um but we don't connect you don't feel that you know a tree is part of your family or this rose bush in your garden is part of your family or a fox trotting across the field is or anything like that or the birds who come to your table 
yeah. but it's so missing for me do you feel the same thing yeah I think um I'm sure I'd love to be able to magically know how many of us are out there in the world of human folk that are still or have reconnected to the magnificence of nature in every shape and form uh, and vibration and energy uh, I'm sure there's probably more than we think um, I hope there is anyway and I think it is growing yeah. um, because I think a lot of people are finding there's a there's like an emptiness of spirit and they're feeling it more mm. and so for me I, I just hope that that number I'm pretty sure I've always been very intuitive and I feel like more and more people are reconnecting or they've been, you know, from a young child, been very connected, like you've said, and I have been, and they've maybe lost the path a bit, but now they're coming back again and really remembering, you know, just how incredibly mm. um, diverse and magnificent all life on Mother Earth is. And yeah. then feeling the joy of that and the reconnection in themselves which is I think ultimately what most people are searching for isn't it it's that sense of oh, I agree. real connection. yeah I, I do agree and I um well I'm a Leo so I'm, a, I'm, I'm not I'm an optimist <laughs> I want mm. to think this is happening so I have to take a yeah. slight rain on myself to say no whoa let's let's do a quick reality check before we go any further but like you yeah. I feel more and more people want this and yes. I'm getting contacted on social media by people who are just tentatively like, you know, almost it's like, are you safe to talk to about this? Yes, exactly. Yeah. And I think, I think there are, um, there are levels of sort of um, human conditioning but what I notice is when I talk to people that come and see my art, they'll often, like you say, they're a bit tentative. And then I'll share a bit more and say where I'm coming from. And then they share a bit more yeah. and then it opens up. And that's that's wonderful. But also I love it when children come and oh, see yes. my art and they come in and, oh, you know, and they're just connected instantly. You can see this and feel this huge connection and oh, look at the rabbit or you know and and their parents then I think it encourages their parents to to come into that world because I think a lot of people have been taught that it's okay to love animals when you're a small child yes. but then you get to a certain age and you have to disconnect from that and and be serious and yes. talk about serious things that don't involve wildlife and nature which is which is just so sad and I mean I experienced that myself um mm. you know in, in my school and my parents and my friends mm. it was almost like there was a cut off you couldn't really yeah. say when it was but it was almost like it doesn't exist anymore and I was heartbroken you know mm. because my whole heart was deeply connected and so I sort of went into hiding when I got about 13 14 mm. and sort of hid it for many many years but it was always there and burning very brightly but I didn't really feel safe to, to share it I think um, it's important too because people don't I think feel it's a little bit like you know after a certain age Father Christmas doesn't exist anymore yes yeah it's, it's the fairies don't exist anymore and yeah once you have grown up enough you don't have that imaginary friend and you yeah you don't know how to say actually dad it's not imaginary yes that's it and I think a lot of people naturally when you're young and you're surrounded by people telling you that that's the way it is you use you you go along with it as it's yeah. sort of a bit of a protection isn't it to yeah. be like them yeah. um and and I think yeah. I think some people also are quite distanced anyway when they come into the world around animals and nature um yeah. and I think again sometimes people are very much more focused on people rather than animals and nature and I do I think everybody's here for a different reason aren't they so um, absolutely um, but I, I'd like a bit more and and for me you know mm. so, yeah people I mean you know we're thoroughly enjoying having a chat now and other people that we both know that we talk to um, yeah. but you know yeah I like talking even just to my cat even just to my cat especially to my cat 
absolutely. Before I get bored to death here. (laughs) (laughs) But there's the birds outside and you watch and you, you know, I'm sitting there having a little relax watching the birds through the window and it's like, Oh, hey, look, there's a nuthatch. Oh, there's two nuthatches. We have got a pair. Oh, have you got a nest yet? And all this stuff is going through. And um, I love that connection as as well as. So it isn't a sort of instead. It's an as well as. Yeah. And I mean, I've, I've always sort of seen the animals and nature, but, you know, centrally the animals as my family. Um hmm. And yep. and over the years, after I sort of shut that away and then gradually started to peel it back and then really peeled it back, mm-hmm. I realised from lots and lots of different um, experiences I've had that they are exactly that. They are mm-hmm. our relatives. They're mm-hmm. non-human relatives. And, um, and I, I love the analogy of uh, the quantum hologram absolutely yeah uh, oh you're and, uh, yeah sorry go on yeah <laughs> you're not. totally on my totally on my plane there <laughs> yeah so so this idea that um if we are and i'm you know i can't prove it i can't disprove it if we are all part of this big holograph um uh, then it means that there are literally just on planet earth millions and millions and millions of different species of all sorts of life in wondrous and incredible form. And yet within each of us, there is a teeny part of all of those pieces. And so I have had lots of people over the years who say to me, why am I drawn to certain animals? Or why is it that when I see a hare in particular, I'm absolutely captivated? And and sort of over the years of peeling those layers back and through various things that I've remembered and developed it's it's mm. almost like well it's either that that's a core part of your your ancestry and your background far beyond this lifetime in however whichever way or form that shows up or and it can be about there's a calling within you there's an imbalance that's saying reconnect to this part this aspect of yourself yeah yeah. And tune into that and remember what that is and bring that back out in yourself. And to me, that it's just magic. And it, yes, it just, exactly. I could talk about it forever, as you could tell. <laughs> you might well end up talking about that kind of thing, you know, certainly for this podcast, but hopefully you'll come back again and we can talk again. Yeah, but that'd be lovely. It's the magic of it, indeed. And you said, you know, either it's, you know, something in your past that you know past ancestry connection or it's something you need now for me Mm. it's always both Mm. it's almost like great 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 grandmother hair has come back and said oi wake up Ellen you need me now look at me listen to me yes yeah yeah beautiful and and I know from I mean I've I've had I've been lucky enough to speak with a number of different um, indigenous elders over the years, and to hear them speak about their connectedness, and they talk about the ancestors being the animals are our ancestors, and the animals have been in human form before, and humans have been in animal form before, and and as soon I, I always get this, it's almost like hairs on the back of my neck, yeah, and this oh, connecting with more truth and I trust that you know in, intuitive part of myself and and I know that when I hear these things it just feels like yes that's part of the the puzzle um and it just made you know it makes sense to me and um and it just makes me feel so much more um connected to life yes. you know it's mm-hmm. And I think that I struggle. I I like people, but I'm a lot less tolerant of people than I am of animals. Mm. Um, and I I think that's a part of what makes me me and why I'm why I've been doing the things I do on the planet. Exactly. Um, but I do want to connect with people that are remembering yes. and want to remember, um, particularly because I just want. 
um, as many people on the planet as quickly as possible to remember that we really need to protect these precious beings mm. for all of our sakes, mm. you know, regardless of whether or not they're passionate about wildlife or not. Yeah. Without this web of life, we're all done for, aren't we, to be we are, quite we frank? Can't, we can't live on our own. And mm. we're just not, you know, Mother Earth... Excuse me, guys, if you don't like the phrase, but planet Earth is four and a half billion years old. And she, in that sense, um, quite um, love, love lock in in that way. I think she's mm -hmm. she knows what she's doing. I think yeah. this is a system that is working. And mm -hmm. she organized us all to live together. Yep. So. You know, there have been humans on planet Earth for what about five five million years, say roughly. Guess mm. how much? What percentage is five million of four point five billion? <laughs> a teeny, teeny little bit. Exactly. <laughs> so, so we know it all. Wow, <laughs> I don't we really know. Really don't. And it's almost as if that's the that's quite a sad part of it because in the in the belief that we know it all, we pinch ourselves off from so much yes. more. Yes. And to me, and obviously I'm very biased, but to me, the joy, the real deep joy is the connection to, to wildlife and knowing that when we align with her laws, mm -hmm. we can bring magic into our own life and Absolutely. create what we want. Um, mm -hmm. And for me, that's, you know, it's, it's living experience of that and how incredibly powerful uh, we can all be when we get out of our own ways and we can... That says it all. Love. Yeah, when we get out of our own way, and I mean, some people sort of say, or they used to say when I was a bit younger, so like, get out of your head, get out of your own head, you know. Yeah. And yeah. You, you need to, like... The world does the whole universe does not spin around Ellen or around Jules yeah. or any one of us. It's working its own way. And life is so much easier when you work along with it. And I found yeah. this in all sorts of ways, like you know, my coaching business with um, when I was working for the Ministry of Defense as a computer boffin, for goodness sake. Mm -hmm. They work then. Yeah, of course. You 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 connect with everything else. And you sort of understand it and feel it. And it's, no, it's not a human and you're not anthropomorphizing it, but mm. it's there doing its thing. Yeah. And you can't make it do something else. You can organize yourself so that you work together. Yeah. Um, but, but, but you can't force it to do something else. And people complain about the weather, for instance. And then, oh, you know, why can't we do something about this? <laughs> go, really? <laughs> you have no idea how weather works. <laughs> well, that's it. And um, you know, it's um, it's again, it's con it's conditioning, isn't it? That um, I think as a nation, generally, Great Britain, United Kingdom, is obsessed with the weather. Um, and we moan if it's hot, we moan if it's cold, we moan if it's wet, we moan if it's dry. So it's almost like that sort of conditioned, um, I don't know, passive, aggressive sort of response rather than saying, here is the weather. Isn't it beautiful? Yeah. Dress accordingly, exactly. act accordingly. Yeah. Um, I don't know who it was that said it once. They said there's no such thing as wrong weather, only wrong clothing. <laughs> I've heard it for years. I, I, I don't uh, go out very much now because I've got too old and creaky, but I used to... Do loads and loads of bushcraft, you know, go out wild camping and go out with a group and we'd sort of hike around on Dartmoor or Scotland or somewhere and, you know, camping overnight and all this sort of thing. Mm. And as long as you were dressed and as long as, you know, if the wind was coming along doing horizontal sleet at you, you found mm. somewhere to hide and waited it out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, exactly, just like the animals do. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah, and, then it stops and all the birds come out and you see this deer coming out from, a, you know, under some trees and all that kind of thing. Oh, that's OK. And that, again, is like going along with it. It yeah. needs to sleet and hail at the moment. Um, OK, yeah. that's cold and frightening and horrible. Um, mm. Let's hide. 
you know, that's yeah. a nice rock or a cave or a tree or a bush or something and exactly. pull the tarp over us and have yeah. a dance for however long. That's it. Yeah, and also I think with animals um, and all of nature, there is a presence um, in the moment and an acceptance of the moment as it is, whereas us beautiful souls in in funny human bodies we get wrapped up in all of this past stuff and, and future stuff and get a knickers in a real old twist don't we about mm -hmm. projecting what we think is going to happen mm -hmm. you know tomorrow or a week or a year or 10 years away and then we sort of project into that our fears and our worries and and, and get sort of all upset about it so when it's raining, we sort of project into, oh, it's going to be bad and oh, I'm going to get wet and I'm going to be cold. And it hasn't even happened because we haven't even <laughs> stepped out into it yet. <laughs> and we also get very inflexible with it too because, I mean, at the moment it is wet and raining. Yesterday right. evening it was lovely and sunny. It had been raining during the day. And I was able to go out in the garden and start doing a few things which actually have I have had to wait because the, the weather was just too wet to do. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, today is wet again so yeah. okay I'm doing something else exactly. I'm not I do. totally fraught because I can't do what I planned to do last Wednesday and put into my diary or my project plan or whatever then, okay yeah. you know life happens move it along and it's a, it's adaptability isn't it and mm. flexibility and um and resilience yes that's to, what I was thinking of too yeah, yeah. And, and it's this trust that also that because we've again we've been taught to be productive and to be organized and planned and we all do that in different ways and that's that's fine mm -hmm. um and yet when we get fixated on that we lose the belief and the trust and the faith that there is a natural flow of life yeah. and again like the weather we go with it rather than when you resist it um what is it they say resistance is futile <laughs> resistance is futile resistance exactly. is futile <laughs> and, it, and it gets really painful as well doesn't it and uncomfortable oh, and, and yeah. gnarly <laughs> really sort of funny uh you know uh, i haven't got my proper board gear on i need my board gear uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. but it, it exactly. is and it, it is so much easier if you can learn to work with the flow yeah and this yeah, is what i see in your pictures mm, oh lovely I'm, i, I just love it because oh, you, see... you know the hair i started off with there's the hair and the hair I don't know if it was a, a male hair or female hair, but hair mm. is just being hair. Yes. She's not exactly. being, you know, as I might be, like, I might be Ellen doing podcast or Ellen stroking the cat or Ellen half cock asleep or yeah. you know, Ellen writing or something like that. I'm not yeah. Ellen doing something, or as I often am. Hair is yeah. just hair, being hair. Yeah. Yes, being, and that's it, isn't it? If we could be more in our lives and I think that's something that takes ongoing practice and compassion for ourselves because we find it very difficult to be as humans and I don't think that's a design fault I think that's part of who we are and what we're here to be and create and expand into um, but if we can remember and, and learn and that's why I love the animals so much and the trees and the plants they're in that moment and they are being yeah and when you connect into that it feels so good it feels resistance free yeah. and it's almost like I liken it to I don't know if you've ever abseiled in your life I haven't no um I I've watched people and I can almost sort of shape shift into it and go go with yeah. the feeling but I've never actually yeah. Yeah, you have. Well, yeah, I've done it a number of times and, and not something I would choose to do. It's always been for raising money for charity or whatever or a challenge. Um, and I'd get terrified. My brain would be saying, you're going to die if you climb over this edge. Mm -hmm. And rightly so, it's worried. Um, and I'm in a harness, obviously the safety harness, and I'd be terrified and almost like shaking until I lean into the harness and then I go, oh, it's got me. 
Uh, and to me, this oh, is yeah. what the animals and nature bring to me is just lean into the support, this yes. support all around you, which is, you know, not just nature, but, you know, the beyond, the higher powers, the, the you know, the ancestors, whatever you, however you call that God, whatever you call it lean into that and trust that there is a bigger plan that we don't understand and we're not meant to and we are being held by that mm -hmm. and then we have choice about how we choose to go with that yes and to me that's that's the most reassuring thing I found so mm -hmm. far in my life that reassures me better than anything else <laughs> I think that's a really lovely way of putting it and I love the idea of I was going to slightly rephrase what you said, but lean into being you, lean into yourself. Yeah, exactly. And I, yeah, I really feel yeah. I'm, going to hang on to, I'm going to get a post-it note and stick it up all over the house now. And lean yeah. into yourself. And when you feel worried yeah. or stressed, lean into yourself. You've got yeah. you. Yeah, because again, back to the, the holograph. Yes. You know, we are in everything. So... <laughs> However we perceive that, we are a part of hair. Hair is a part of us. We are a part of the tree. We, you know, the tree is a part of us. And that's when, if we can give out love and compassion and care and protection to others, yeah. we then are given that in return. And so I think that's why people say, I always feel much better when I've been out in nature or I always feel much better when I've, you know, been stroking a horse or stroking my cat or my dog or, yeah. and it's because I think we, we get that heart, that heart connection. It is the heart connection. Yeah, it is. And it's something um, I, I find I try and get clients to come and help me do in my work or help do because yeah. when that, you know, they get, everybody gets stressed. Mm. everybody gets stuck everybody yeah. gets into a place where there's too much it's overwhelm and yeah. nature all of it even if it's a just go and sniff a rose or I've got a whole bucket full of hyacinths blooming outside my um, yeah. front door at the moment which is gorgeous Lovely. that you yeah. come past and there's this fantastic scent and yeah. just for a moment Whatever it was you were worrying about, that, you know, they hadn't got any cheese in the shop or whatever, um, <laughs> it's, only, it's gone. Yeah, exactly. So you can eat something else yeah. instead of cheese, you know. Exactly. Yeah. And yeah. if only we could get it into... Yeah, it's a thing. We, we sort of feel we need to sort ourselves out. Yes, it's all on our shoulders. Yeah. That's it. And nature right. is always there saying, you lean on me. Exactly. Exactly. And there's a there's a divine timing to things as well. Mm -hmm. um, that probably sounds a bit hippie, but I don't know how else to describe it. But it's almost like my experience of life is when I'm trying to push oh, yeah. to make things happen, uh, not only is it not very comfortable and I get stressed, um, but it also tends to get a bit sticky and delays happen and things might go wrong. Um, if I'm too laid back and I don't do anything and I become, you know, like a vegetable on the couch yeah. and do nothing, yeah. clearly there's another problem there because nothing actually starts to take shape and nothing starts to form. No. So things for me, and again, this is what I've loved from, from learning from the indigenous peoples is the middle way. They have different names for it in different cultures, don't they? But like this middle way where there is a tension between holding a vision of what we would like to allow and draw into our life um, and flowing with that, even though the way that we get there is probably very different from what we might imagine. Mm -hmm. It's not a straight line, it's, it's a meandering river going wherever. But uh, with my various indigenous, in my own indigenous culture because we have one here mm. in britain yeah, uh, we, do. Um, we call yeah. it we call it the crooked path oh yes that's lovely i've not i've not heard of that but um 
I've got a lovely friend in America and she's um, Native American. Mm -hmm. uh, and they call it the, the red path. Yeah. Yeah. Um, which is beautiful as well. So, but yeah, it's, this, it's sort of this in between where it's like a little bit if you have an elastic band over two of your yeah. fingers and you just get to the point where there's a connection. Yeah. That's the point that we're trying to get to where we hold it lightly, we hold a vision of what we would like to feel and allow and bring in and then we go fluidly with it and um, and again the animals and nature as a whole is just they're just the best teachers for me I'm yet to find any better teachers than, than them in all their different shapes and sizes and guises. <laughs> I quite agree um, and um, uh, as I said I, I, was, I was brought up in what we call the old ways mm. um, my family been what you might call witches for hundreds and hundreds of years. And mm. you just learn to keep your head down because it, it can get rather uncomfortable or certainly has in the past. Um, mm. So you don't, but you still carry it forward. And yeah. because people don't know about it is because we've managed to keep our heads down fairly well. Well, until yeah. about, actually things changed quite a bit at the millennium. A lot more yeah. of us felt we could come out much more and talk. Yeah. But yeah. again, it's the animals and the trees. They're much older than us. And yeah. you can talk to them. You can sit with them. And probably lots of the people who are watching us have actually gone and sat under a tree and leaned against it and put their hands on it and maybe even yeah. hugged it. And they may not want to talk about that because people go, ooh, tree hugger. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> but they are... But they, felt supported by that tree or else you sit by a stream and you know how it is and you just hear the stream singing mm -hmm. and it sort of washes a whole load of stuff away from you exactly yeah. um, or birds exactly. singing or you're watching i mean we've got quite a lot of um we've got uh, quite a big uh kindness of ravens down the valley which is nice mm -hmm. when they all get going yeah. Resident yeah. birds, we've got sparrow hawks and peregrines come over. And oh, the buzzards are amazing, as you know, because they really just float. Mm -hmm. And there's just they've got fingers like fingers in the end of their wings. And they yeah. just tickle the edge and they just hovering and floating and watching. Yeah. And you can just watch that. And sometimes if they're, they're having fun because they play. Yeah. Um, and they get an, an air current like like a glider does. And they just mm. go round and round, really enjoying. Whoa, whoa. And it must be like you're abseiling, the same sort of you thing. You would. Yeah, you would, yeah. though, wouldn't you? If you could fly, you'd be up there. I'd be up there all the time. Oh, yeah, great. Just relax on my wings. This is fine. <laughs> and again, they're being held, aren't they? They're held. And, and yet they engage because if they didn't know how to fly effectively, they'd fall out of the sky, which they do a bit when they're youngsters. But they learn how to engage yeah. don't they with yeah. with the wind and and how to how to navigate that with least effort and least resistance yeah and it, and it is they, beautiful it's so it works so beautifully i was yeah. um, i was watching uh the third episode of david attenborough's last night which has yeah. lots of eagles in it yeah with the, they they've got a whole after bit with the seagull yeah. it's totally yeah. totally amazing Awesome. You watch them and you just go, oh my god! Yeah. And the thing with the um, hen harriers uh, breaks my heart because I adore hen harriers. Um, yeah. But you know, she says, you know, are you up for it? Because I'm not quite sure that I want you for my mate unless you're up for it. And that happens yeah. a lot, by the way, in nature. And he, he came over last night, um, and so he sort of chats her up and brings her the right food. But he passes it to her in the air. He drops it and she turns upside down and grabs it with her feet. And then yeah. takes it. And it's like, yeah. oh, if I could do that. Yeah. Oh. It's gorgeous. And again, it's, you know, for me, it's like this sacred contract that you see in nature everywhere when you learn to be still and watch and learn from them yeah. um and i've been fortunate enough to see um eagles when they lock 
their yes. claws and they do the the spin. The spinning, yeah, tumbling. Like yeah. This, just incredible snake. It was a pair of snake eagles. Wow. Um, and they were we were literally in a minibus being dropped off. We were on the way to being dropped off at the um at the res uh, the conservation um uh reserve that we were going to. And I looked up and and then I heard somebody on the ground go, snake eagles. And we looked up and they were coming down and they were locked. And it was this pure, sacred reverence for each other of a trust that's not a soft, fluffy trust. No. It's not, you have to be that, in that moment, you have to be the right thing in order for me to allow you into my sacred space. And... um and it's just mesmerizing and you think well talk about lessons in boundaries and uh and how to hold your power and you know but it's not done there's mm. nothing nasty about it it's purely an expectation of i'll meet you here but only if you meet me in the way that's acceptable <laughs> yeah yeah uh, i noticed that we're back to hairs again because the third mm. episode has got beautiful stuff with hairs yeah and yeah we've all seen these pictures of what of what they call hair boxing and yes. i think still a lot of people think that it's um a couple of males fighting it yes. is not no it's the yeah. ladies <laughs> well it's 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 the lady who i sometimes feel she's sort of saying what part of no is it you do not understand <laughs> <laughs> like, you've got to earn this you've got to earn it <laughs> they really do she yeah. First of all, you know, he comes along and sniffs and, you know, sort of says, hey, you know, how about it? And she goes, yeah. And yeah. Um, she'll stand up and smack <laughs> And so he comes up and goes, help, and smacks back. <laughs> and then um, they sort of do this for a little bit. And then she'll sort of say, catch me if you can then. Yeah. And she runs. Yeah. And he's got to. And yeah. others will come and join in then, and then um, they'll all be trying to get her. And she's she's sort of in the middle of it. And she's going, get off, get off, get off, get off, get off, you know, yeah. uh, and yeah. running again. And it's the the girl, the female, exactly. who, when it happens, if it happens, and if it's with you. Yes, exactly. And it's on her turn, but it's not from a place of domination. No, um, which is where. So again, I I um very interested in how humanity has veered away from what I'd call the balance of, and I'm sure you do too, sacred masculine, sacred feminine, yes. mm. and and that we both we have both in all of us. So there is masculine and feminine in all beings, absolutely, uh, and it's an energy rather than a gender, which is yeah. how we would normally label it as humans. Um, and that when we, when us as humans moved away from that balance, which always, mm. through all the things that I've learned and read, has always been that the sacred feminine is the guiding force, a benevolent guiding force, which to me, in terms of us as humans, is our heart, our intuition, our matriarchal firm but fairness which is yeah. exactly what you're describing with with the animals and then the sacred masculine imbalance is the protector of that and the the activator and the one that brings the nourishment yeah. um, and allows that this to flourish and new life to come forward yeah. and if we put that into ourselves for me that's allowing my heart to wisely and knowingly feel the right way forward and then putting my head into action with all the clever stuff that brains can do exactly. uh, and putting yeah. that in, in unison rather than it being a fight or a you know a battle that's that's about domination and and one being you know uh, you know the dominator and the other being the submissive which mm. is never how it actually is in in in, um, Not in the natural world in anything natural and it is sadly it's just when when we divert from that that we get ourselves again as i always say a nick is in a twist i was thinking while you were saying it because um 
I I feel very strongly um, our young David um, got something wrong in the third episode because I've got two mm-hmm. friends who've got small herds of horses and I know you are a horse person yeah. and yeah. one of our mutual friends is, a, is another very much horse person. Yeah. And yeah. in both of my friends' cases, the herd, the the leader of the herd, the boss of the herd is the older mare. Mm, yeah. She yeah. leads it. And she has sorted out, and my, my Scottish friend, she's got two young geldings in the herd. Uh, yeah. One of them is a huge great Suffolk punch, um, mm. and the other mm. is a gorgeous little grey Arab. And the boss yeah. of the herd is a, is a older mare, Bay Arab. She's about 13, 14 now. Yeah. And we saw when they first came together, this is years ago, mm-hmm. we thought, oh, probably um, the Suffolk Punch will probably, he'll be the the um, the omega of the herd in a sense. You know, he'll be the, the gelding who follows along. And yeah. he will take the young um, Arab as the protector. Oh, no. Mm-hmm. Oh, no. <laughs> no, she, I mean, you... Fiona was saying, you know, you could almost see her sizing them up and saying, no, I think if I'm really in a fight, I'll go for the punch. He'll he'll just squash him. <laughs> um, um, so her protector is this beautiful Suffolk punch. Yeah. And the wicked uncle, the wicked wizard of who is <laughs> glorious tease and keeps everybody on their toes is the young Arab girl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. then others yeah. fit in amongst that. Yeah. And my yeah. other friend down the road, the same thing goes with her. The older mare rules the roost. Yeah. Yeah. And ancestrally again. Hopefully a good thing in it. Um <laughs> I've not lost anything out of my brain. <laughs> my ear it's all right, it's your babel fish, dear. Going back to the <laughs> going back to Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, you put your babel fish in your ear. <laughs> um I can't remember what I was going to say now. I think there's there's a personality. So each, I think, like us, we've all got our own unique personality. Yeah. Um, and then we've also got this sense of the purpose that we're here for as well. And I think with horses, because, I mean, I've seen it go different ways. And it all depends on the dynamic of the group, of the herd. Mm. Um, and I think this goes across all of life. You know, um, some personalities will... The last thing on earth they would ever want to do is is be the lead, whether Absolutely. they're a mare or a gelding or a stallion, and they're just like, no, leave me out yeah. of it. I'm just happy to follow along and do whatever yeah. you decide. Yeah. Um, and others are more like, well, no, I'd really feel more safe and secure if I'm the lead. Um, but you can, you if you again, if you sit and you become present in the moment, you can quite quickly see the personalities coming yeah. out. And yeah. and again, I love to talk about that with people because we are often even in the um david attenborough world of science um they're called it's and i always think yeah, no, I it's a he that. or a she or a they you know yeah there's no need to it and you know a lot of scientists will number the animals because it's this fear of becoming emotionally connected which of course would be far more useful i think in many <laughs> i <instances>. totally agree <laughs> um and but, I don't um, believe that they do cut off anyway. I think they just try and pretend they do. I know. I think they play along because it's the accepted norm. Some of them will be more disconnected than others. Um, yeah. But, yeah, and there's this sense of just being able to acknowledge who they are as a kind, a species kind, and their, you know, huge ancestry. I mean, I don't know what the oldest animals that are still here physically on the earth, but I know the pandas, for example, have been here for like 10 million years at least. Um, And, you know, and it's honouring the fact that their ancestral wisdom and knowing has come right through to the modern day beings that are here um, and and honouring them like the elders that they are um and and you know and and just knowing that we have so much to learn from them and it's not about that who's better or you know scientists can be a bit obsessed with who's more intelligent and how do you measure intelligence well that's a whole other conversation oh well, yeah <laughs> that, that's a whole that's a whole other podcast Jules <laughs> <laughs> um but but yeah but I think you know and it is the joy of 
just accepting them for who they are, knowing, as you said so beautifully earlier, that they know exactly who they are and they are themselves regardless. And if we can learn and remember how to do that a bit more in each day, uh, and that's not about being naive and sharing with people that will then abuse that trust or manipulate us or whatever, Um, but knowing when we can be more ourselves and connect with people that we feel are trustworthy as well, it then gives them permission to do the same. And that's a ripple effect, isn't it? That can, I think, can so gorgeous. only do good. Yeah, can only do good in the world. And I'm just um, all for ripples. Um, yeah. <laughs> everything I do is I just hope this ripples out and, and connects. And I it hasn't got to come out as a clone of me. It just makes the ripple into somebody else and then they take it yeah. further and then they take it further. Yeah, yeah and they bring their own exactly. pieces of the jigsaw that we haven't thought of. And, yeah. and this is, again, when I see, um, I try not to very often, when I see politicians arguing with each other and they don't even listen to what <laughs> the other person is saying, I just think... Um, I remember the, the talking. Do you know, heard of the talking? Oh, yes, yeah, we use it, yeah. Yeah, it's such a I'll, brilliant I'll thing. Isn't mine it? at the moment, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and and it's it's just that simple thing of if we actually can just learn to listen mm. to each other more carefully and with more um, respect and uh, and presence, that again is a transformative thing. And it's not that we have to agree with each other because we don't, and we'll have different viewpoints. But if we, you know, allow ourselves to listen and, and seek to understand rather than to come back with something that will prove them wrong or show others that, you know, I'm right and you should do what I'm saying, then again, we can learn so much as well. Because in that listening, you can go, oh, I never even thought of that. And, well, now you mention it, oh that does sort of change the way I think about it. You know, and that's... that's so exciting. I I think it's so exciting. And you suddenly go, oh, you know, I don't don't have to be bored churning the same old round of what I think over and over and over. It can grow. We're so encouraged. Um, I don't know. I hope it's doing some good, but we're so encouraged. We need biodiversity. Well, we bloody do. But hell, we need diversity in our heads and our thinking. Exactly, exactly. And I do think from a, if you look at human evolution, um, and I, I've, I've had a tendency in my life, I like looking at the bigger picture. I'm very big picture. So it gives me um, a sense of greater perspective to think, well, yeah. if I was a, a being looking down on Earth and I was like, you know, from a completely different planet, just imagine. Um, and I was looking at what was going on with the human folk in particular. I'd be, I'd be, you know, wow, what is going on down there? Um, but if you look at that, it it al- allows you to see that in these times, what the big, some of the big patterns are, and there's plenty of patterns to see, but yeah. some of the big patterns is this diversity, this neurodiversity and all of the different diversities that are, I think they've probably always been there. Oh, yeah. But they're becoming visible and expressed. And to me, it's causing a lot of um, uh, fighting and a lot of disagreeing and a lot of polarisation. This is right, this is wrong. And yet through that, as we go through time, um, I think it's quite exciting because what I'm hoping is happening, and I'm sure it is, is that we are opening up our heart again yes. so that we can actually let it in. And although there'll be a lot of, you know, fighting and all sorts of horrible stuff that we humans can get up to, sadly, um, I think ultimately as we as we go through that, it will help us to move back more in alignment with the fact that we are all teeny little drops in an enormous ocean yeah. but individually we all have something beautiful to contribute into that mm. um, and that gives me hope as well because 
I try and avoid the news as much as possible, oh, no, but I, I do can't listen to the news. Yeah. I, I I keep an overview of what's happening yeah. just so that I'm not ignorant to what's going on. But um, but it can be re very overwhelming for for so many, can't it? To very very painful, and yeah. then you sort of see something like you know we've lost ninety percent of our butterflies in the past yeah. twenty five thirty years. Yeah, which hardly gets mentioned, um, yeah. and then you see somebody arguing about, I don't know what some pop star has said, or you know, yeah. something like right. That. And you see, <laughs> what? I know, <laughs> you know, I know, and then and that that can drag us into a feeling of negativity, which then drags us down as well, and um, and I think that's that's why again it's back to balance isn't it it's 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 being aware of what's happening but then also saying right what can i do today yeah. that will send out some some effectively so important. yeah yeah balance it's not about good or bad it's just about what is balance and how can we how can we bring that into the world and that's when it's a bit more empowering isn't it because we have choices that we can make much more and uh, one of my um, witchy ancestors, witchy backgrounds. My uncle Purse, he was a gardener, very, mm. very good one. And mm. um, one of the things he would say about what we would call mindset now, thinking and all that kind of thing, was sort of like, well, don't you think about that there, Ellen? Stop feeding the weeds. <laughs> yeah. You know, while, you know, that while I'm thinking of, you know, why are they thinking about what this pop star's saying or, you know, what this government book's saying or something like that, when, you know, what are we doing about the fact that we've only got 10% of the butterflies? Yeah. This is it. Right. Stop thinking about the bad things. That's feeding yeah. the weeds. And yeah, start, now, what can you do, even if it's just like you can go out and plant some really good seeds for butterflies in your garden? Yeah. Do the thing you can do, and the exactly. things you can't do, leave them alone. Yeah, don't focus on it. Attend yeah. to the flowers. <laughs> and don't feed the weeds. <laughs> yeah. Not that he was a big one for weeds, because of course they're not really, but you know, you know what I mean. No. It takes yeah, I know what the metaphor yeah. is. It's yeah. like don't don't pour it's like don't pour fuel onto the fire that you really don't want to be happening in that moment. And instead create something that is um again balanced and uh helpful to balance it in the world brings, and... brings joy for me if you can do yeah. something that brings joy even if it's only to you because yeah. that energy will come off you you'll be much nicer the next time somebody says hi over the garden gate to you um yeah. it, that makes such a difference if you can try and yeah. do, not that you forget the bad stuff because yeah. that's not good either. Yeah, exactly. And it's this like balance of what you understand what's going on, but you do what you can to help the good stuff happen. Exactly, exactly. And, you know, it goes all the way down to the, you know, the small decisions that we make every day. I, I um, <laughs> We finally, I've been meaning to do it for a while, uh, we finally switched our toilet paper <laughs> the other day yes exactly it's called, who gives a crap <laughs> yeah i love it i i i yeah i think it's absolutely gorgeous i mean that the title oh. makes me want to buy it anyway apart from exactly. the good stuff exactly. you know yeah. and they have their whole sort of ethos is friendly and light and making you laugh and and t talking to you about how this simple decision um, which doesn't cost us, we worked it out, it doesn't cost us any more to buy this stuff yeah. than it does to buy the stuff from the supermarket where we were buying it from. But it makes us feel better to know that we're doing another little step that makes the, well, we hope, we trust that what they're saying is true, that it makes the world a more sustainable place and it's less damaging, there's no plastic and all that sort of thing. But also, that it made the courier lady that delivered it laugh because it had got, you know, it got toilet jokes on the box that it arrived in. And she was, I was upstairs and David, my husband, answered the door and I could hear her chortling away, you know, she was laughing. And I had to ring the bank up um, because I tried to do a online 
authorization and it hadn't worked so I rang my bank and he said hmm, and do you know what the uh, name of the company is and I said <laughs> who gives the crap well he just burst out laughing and then of course we were laughing for five minutes I was telling him all about this toilet paper and again you just think you know it's the smallest things but it just you yeah, know brightened so up brightened up his morning and made me laugh and <laughs> it's like <laughs> so it's, it's that it's sort of empowerment people. Yeah. yeah, get a smile. I mean, I like you, I live out in the country, and so quite a lot of stuff, I do get deliveries um, because yeah. it is actually easier. And yeah. um, there are all sorts of other things, like, you know, it is actually giving the delivery man a job and mm. he's using this much petrol per day, and I haven't got to add to it with my car to get to the supermarket. And So there's a lot of stuff around there which does work. But, you know, he comes along and like you, something happens and you have a laugh. Exactly. Or you just say something yeah. nice, you know, like, thank you so much for delivering this to me. You know, it makes such a difference. And yeah, that's it. And um, it doesn't cost anything, does it? It takes yeah. a second. And it makes you feel, well, it makes me feel better anyway. I don't know if it makes Yeah, it does me too. And it, and it's, again, it's like with the hair right from the beginning. It's this connection. You've actually made a connection. That's tiny it. one. You may never see this delivery person again. Exactly. You've made a tiny connection to another being, and they may yeah. come back to you. Yes. And, you know, back to nature herself, you know, I go out walking a lot. I don't walk very long distances very often, um, but I go out every day. I try to go out at dusk and dawn because um, yes. it's one of my favourite times because obviously Mind the veils you. are thinning and there's all sorts of things happening. The nocturnal beings are coming out it and the daytime is. ones are roosting, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and when I, you know, even if I'm here, like the other day you mentioned a fox. Mm -hmm. I was looking out my window here and there's a couple of fields and some hedgerows and, and a little woodland. And um, a fox, beautiful fox, came trotting out. And I haven't seen a fox here for six years. Wow. Uh, which doesn't mean to say they're not here, yeah, but I haven't seen, seen one. one. So I know there's a lot less. Mm -hmm. Our neighbours who have been here for 20 years said they hardly see foxes and they used to see them quite regularly. Because mm -hmm. we're so rural and I think there's just not a sustenance for them so they have to go off to the cities and towns to to unfortunately often sort of you know scavenge for their food which I find so sad but anyway so he or she came trotting out and I just as usual just I can I can feel myself just sending all this love which just comes out it's not I don't have to think about it, it just pours out yeah. this fox stops and they do this they stop they look they know they know that you're there sending you know you've them love. And they felt that energy you sent. Exactly. And exactly. I sometimes feel, I get the same thing. I sometimes feel yeah. back from them. It's a, oh, exactly. there's, a, there's, a, there's a live, what comes over to me very often is, oh, there's a live human out there. Exactly. Or, oh, they're a bit different. And sometimes the birds will fly away because they're like, oh, what was that? <laughs> You know, sort of almost like, wow, I'm not used to those human people doing that. No, know, I, that's so. that's often the feeling that I get too. Yeah, and they really do connect. And um, I mean, I've got so many stories. I'm conscious of our time running out, but we maybe have to do this again. But I've got so I many think stories. Have to do this again. Yeah. Oh, miraculous things where animals have come, and they've not only made that connection, but they've behaved in extraordinary ways. Yeah. And um, and I'd love to share some a lovely example of some ponies. Um, but uh, have I got a minute to tell you that story? Is it? No, or we're going to save that one because I am oh, now nice. holding you to the fact that you <laughs> back. You see, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's the deal. I'm very happy to do that. <laughs> but yeah, but it, but it is it's it's fabulous that when we you know can when we can suspend our disbelief. Yeah in what is really going on across species yeah. that for me is when your life your experience of life shifts radically um and in all sorts of ways that you couldn't even imagine and i think that i just totally agree with you and i'm just thinking what a fabulous note to finish on mm. Yeah. Let's expand and connect. Yeah. See you all again, people. Bye for now. <laughs>